In previous videos we have talked about several theories about Bran Stark, many of them quite believable by many, and others that are not so popular among the fans of the world of Game of Thrones, but for different reasons could be real too. In this video, we will be talking about the theories that you my faithful ravens have liked the most. Theories that even connect to the House of the Dragon. And for more videos of the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Three-Eyed Raven. One of the strangest theories in the Game of Thrones universe is the idea that Bran Stark is actually the Night King. This theory suggests that this evil entity took over the body of this Stark to become the King of Westeros. This strange theory took force during the House of the Dragon, since different clues in the prophecies of the Targaryen lineage lead us to think that something terrible really happened at the end of Game of Thrones. And whoever is sitting in power is not who he claims to be. To understand this theory, we must start at the beginning. Thousands of years ago, the First War of Men occurred in Westeros, a war they won but ended up causing the First Long Night. The White Walkers were the creation of magical beings fighting against humans, and they created these entities of destruction as an ultimate weapon against humans. The White Walkers escape from the control of their creators and almost destroy the planet. The first White Walker was a man who was subjected to a dragon glass ritual. The children of the forest experimented with magic in men, but the result was one they did not expect. Apparently, the White Walkers proved to be much smarter than the children of the forest wanted, so they were able to escape their control. What I think is happening is that the intention of the children of the forest was simply to create the Whites. Zombies with no thought at all, but there was still some of that humanity left in them, and they still maintain their intelligence. Perhaps those first White Walkers remembered when they were human, and this was part of the reason why they rebelled against the children of the forest. However, the Night King had nowhere to go, he could not go back to being human, and now they had become enemies. The Night King, or that first White Walker, initiated an attack against humanity that almost destroyed everything completely. However, the children of the forest had a plan B, and they helped other humans control the Night King and its threat. I think part of this plan B may have been something similar to the Three-Eyed Raven, in conjunction with sharing other knowledge with the humans, such as how to kill these creatures. Possibly the Dagger of Egg on the Conqueror has been passed down from generation to generation, but it is part of a sword given to those first warriors by the Children of the Forest to defeat the White Walkers. It has been mentioned several times that the Dagger of Aegon is the one that connects most of the series in the Game of Thrones universe. If this is so, we could see it in the series of Aegon the Conqueror, about the destruction of Valyria, and even in a prequel during the Long Night. The dagger may be a sword passed down from generation to generation. A weapon created by the children of the forest. Then, as the White Walkers lost a battle, they began to acquire enough power to attack again in the future. We saw how the others created other White Walkers, and how after capturing Daenerys' dragon they decided to attack the wall. We see here that the Night King is a military strategist because he waits for the right moment to attack the Ice Wall. We cannot underestimate the Night King and think of him as a mindless zombie. It is no coincidence that the Night King attacked the North, just after Winterfell was almost in ruins because of the recent wars, while the kingdom was more divided than ever. This is where Bran comes into this theory. In the past, the Three-Eyed Raven could have been that thing that kept the Night King at bay, but the Night King destroyed him and touched Bran.
fact that it touched Bran's arm during the vision could be an indication that it has corrupted him, or that it will transform him into something similar to it. This is where this theory gets more interesting. After Bran had this encounter with the Night King, his behavior turned cold. He looked as if his soul was lost. There is something rather strange here, as Bran's predecessor did not act like this. When Bran met him and had the visions, the three-eyed raven seemed to be more like a teacher, a kind of guide and even shows emotions in his last minutes of life. Bran becomes something beyond the three-eyed raven. If this theory is true, Bran's mind was actually hijacked by the Night King, with the goal of becoming the King of Mankind. What happened next would simply be theater. The Night King walked with his troops to the north, and through Bran's body, gave the dagger to Arya to fake his own destruction. Then he stood in front of Bran, for all to see when he was destroyed. And without knowing it, this victory would put the Three-Eyed Raven, or rather the Night King, on the Iron Throne. So then, how does this theory connect to the House of the Dragon? According to Viserys, Aegon the Conqueror had a vision that led him to desire the unification of the Seven Kingdoms. He saw the destruction of mankind coming because of something approaching from the North. If this theory is true, that thing that came from the North is Bran Stark, who was born in the North, acquires the powers of the Three-Eyed Raven, and then his mind is hijacked by the Night King. This would make Bran not only the most powerful entity in the Game of Thrones universe, but also the greatest threat in its history, as he is an entity with supernatural powers such as remote vision, controlling animals with his mind, resurrecting other entities, and even the ability to travel through time. Actually, if the Night King somehow managed to pass his own consciousness to Bran, there is no way out, and the world of Game of Thrones will not have a happy ending. Of course, this is an unlikely theory in the context of this universe. However, it could be a good starting point for the Jon Snow series. Let's imagine for a moment that Bran starts having dreams about the Night King. Because of that vision, he had the consciousness of that entity starts to manifest in him, and he starts to become evil. What if Jon would then have to come from the North to save mankind? There are a lot of possibilities with that magical aspect of Game of Thrones, and if we eventually see the sequel to Jon Snow, we could learn even more about what happened with Bran, the Three-Eyed Raven, and the White Walkers. But tell me what are your thoughts on all of this? Will Bran be the Night King, or at least become the Night King? In one of our previous videos, we talked about a letter that George Martin sent to some people, explaining the original plans for Game of Thrones. But in that letter there is a part that is crossed out, in which the true ending of Game of Thrones is revealed. Thanks to several internet users, they managed to decipher part of what the original ending says, and this may lead to the series of Jon Snow, confirming many of the theories that many considered incoherent. What would you think if I told you that in the original ending, Bran becomes Jon Snow's enemy? If you want to know this and more, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. In 1993, George Martin wrote a letter to an English publisher, to sell the rights to A Song of Ice and Fire, a series of books George was writing. The man kept that letter, and in that piece of writing, there is a summary of the entire history of Game of Thrones up to that point, including the ending. In this letter, there are obvious differences between the ending proposed by George and the final story of the series. For example, Arya Stark had a love interest with Jon Snow, and in turn Tyrion Lannister had feelings for Arya, creating a rivalry between Jon and Tyrion. We read this letter in its entirety in a previous video, so I suggest you watch it to learn more about the original story that was proposed but there was one part of the letter that was blacked out. Several Reddit users tried to decipher what the crossed out part said, where the original ending of Game of Thrones is revealed. After several hours they came to the following conclusion. For the end of Game of Thrones, the first novel, 
here is an unreadable space and continues, on the Iron Throne with a little, another unreadable space and continues, untimely death. Bran sits free. But his seat is far from comfortable. In the north, Jon Snow is his bitterest enemy. Beyond the narrow sea, Daenerys Stormborn prepares her invasion. And in the distant beyond the wall, the others are watching with cold, dead eyes, gathering their forces. But that's the second book. First let's talk about the part that couldn't be deciphered. This part says that someone made it to the Iron Throne, but had an early death. According to the original story we saw later about Game of Thrones, we can assume that the one who this part was talking about was Joffrey, or Jaime Lannister. In this first story, Jaime was much more ambitious. But the most disturbing part of the writing is what we read next. Bran sits free, but his seat is far from comfortable. What we are told in this part of the letter, is that Bran is sitting on the Iron Throne. In the books it is mentioned that the Iron Throne is the most uncomfortable throne ever created in all of Westeros. This was on purpose. Aegon the Conqueror created this uncomfortable throne, full of swords and rusty metals, so that no king would feel comfortable sitting on this throne, as becoming comfortable or complacent, could cause the kings to forget that they were supposed to rule the Seven Kingdoms, and of course, forget that a threat is coming. The fact that it is mentioned that Bran sits free, in a seat that is far from comfortable, after mentioning the king died prematurely, shows that the ending of Game of Thrones involves Bran Stark, sitting on the Iron Throne. This part of the letter, in a way, vindicates the Game of Thrones writers, as they were heavily criticized for making Bran the King of the Seven Kingdoms in the series. But apparently, these were George Martin's plans from the beginning. But now comes the most shocking part of this letter. In the North, Jon Snow is his bitterest enemy. This confirms that George's plan was always to confront Jon Snow and Bran Stark, after Bran was sitting on the Iron Throne, or at least, that Jon became his enemy. This part confirms directly, the Three-Eyed Raven's intentions to become king could be shady, as the fact that Jon and Bran are enemies in this version, means that perhaps Bran acted against the Stark family itself. This also shows that it is possible the story is not over, since in the end of Game of Thrones, we only saw a strange stare at the time when Jon and Bran said goodbye. This glance hides something that was not clarified in the series, and we expect to understand its meaning in Snow's series. So there is still the possibility that Jon and Bran become enemies. Jon could realize the manipulations of the Raven, which because of him Jon ended the life of Daenerys, and the Raven was behind many tragic events in Jon's life. Perhaps, that enmity between the two characters could still be fulfilled. What could start as a fight about what a Stark is supposed to do in the North, or on the throne, could end in Jon discovering the true intentions of the Three-Eyed Raven. This means there are still stories to be told about these characters. In the past few months, we have heard several news about the Jon Snow series. One of these news suggests that the series will follow Jon Snow's footsteps in the North, after the end of Game of Thrones. If the letter is true, this series could begin the story with Jon in the North, but then transport to King's Landing. So far, we have no news that the actor who played Bran Stark will return in the Jon Snow series. But we have seen this actor participate in many Game of Thrones events, and it is possible, given the right circumstances, we could see him return. Seeing a confrontation between the Three-Eyed Raven and the Last Targaryen, would certainly be something very interesting. Brothers that fate brings them face to face for the future of Westeros. But tell me what do you think about the true ending of Game of Thrones? Could it be that George Martin wanted Jon and Bran to be enemies? Is there still a possibility that we will see this true ending in Jon Snow's series? Game of Thrones ended with the Three-Eyed Raven sitting on the Iron Throne. The Three-Eyed Raven has a strange ability that allows him to see the past, present and future. 
But in the Game of Thrones series, it was explained to us that not only can he observe what is happening, but that he can somehow change the past. Could it be that this ability will allow Bran, or the Three-Eyed Raven, to interact during the Dance of the Dragons? Could it be that this character has more influence over this universe? To understand this, we must analyze two aspects of the Three-Eyed Raven. First are his abilities, and then his mysterious plan. The Three-Eyed Raven is a green seer. They are people who can see the past, present and future. This ability is not exclusive to the Raven. Other characters such as Rickon, Joj and Reed, and even the priestess Melisandre, had some ability to see into the future. But the Three-Eyed Raven's ability is much greater. Although in the books it is explained that the past is already written, we saw several events that give us to understand that the Raven can change the past. The first clue to this was when Ned Stark heard Bran's voice as he had a vision of the past. Then we saw how Bran affected the mind of his friend, Hotter, transmitting a message that would accompany him until the last moment of his life. This ability to affect the past is what makes the Three-Eyed Raven so special. We also saw him affecting all the events of the end of Game of Thrones, giving the dagger to Arya to finish off the Night King, and also manipulating Jon to go against Daenerys, and much more. His plan was to sit on the Iron Throne. The Three-Eyed Raven proved that he can affect the past and the future. If indeed the events of this universe are already pre-established, this means, that if Bran affected the mind of some Targaryen, at the time of the Dance of the Dragons, this would be a fixed event. Something that always happened and always will happen. But what interests would Bran have with the time of the fall of the Targaryens? To understand this, we must know who the Three-Eyed Raven was. When Bran visited him in the cave, he mentioned to him that his name was Bryden. It is believed that the raven was Bryden Rivers, a bastard son of the king, Aeon, the fourth Targaryen. This character was condemned to join the Night's Watch, for ending the life of Aenys and other Targaryen who intended to become king. Bryden disappeared during a mission of the Night's Watch, but actually joined the Children of the Forest, becoming the Three-Eyed Raven. Now, after this character passes to Bran for different situations, it is as if Bran had been possessed by this entity. Bran Stark ceased to exist to become the Three-Eyed Raven, as mentioned in the series. It could be argued that the Three-Eyed Raven is really a type of entity that chooses the next place to inhabit. The Raven could have possessed Bran's body and mind to achieve his goals. This is in accordance with the theory that proposes that the Game of Thrones really was between the Three-Eyed Raven and the Night King. The same game that in the end the Raven would win, because he became king. Something he wanted, since he was a Targaryen. If the Three-Eyed Raven is really an entity linked to the Targaryens, this would explain why Bran wishes to find the Dragon of Daenerys, as mentioned in the series. Now, what does all this have to do with the House of the Dragon? There is a scene, in which we already saw Bran interacting with the actions of the Targaryen. We see how in one of these visions, the Three-Eyed Raven sees the Mad King ordering Jaime Lannister, something Jaime interpreted as referring to the inhabitants of King's Landing. However, the Mad King as well as Hotter may have been seeing the White Walkers attacking Bran. Bran, or the Three-Eyed Raven, may have been the cause of the Mad King's madness. We already have indications that Bran, or the Three-Eyed Raven, has already modified the Targaryen past. But why would it change anything about the House of the Dragon history? If indeed the Three-Eyed Raven is an entity that at one time was a Targaryen who wished good for his family, and ended up banished, this would give him reason to interfere in the events of the Dance of the Dragons. It was, after all, the time when the Targaryen family lost power. 
If there was a Targaryen who could stop the fall of his family by altering the past, he would certainly travel back to the time of the Dragon Dance. Perhaps Bran, no longer a Stark, by becoming the Three-Eyed Raven, this Targaryen entity fulfilled his plan, and now wishes to restore the Targaryen family in the past. Now, this theory is unlikely, as the Three-Eyed Raven's abilities are not entirely clear in the books, and we don't think they will end up mixed. Although there is a possibility, that we will see some reference to this character. I think we will see this entity back in the Jon Snow series, and he could be the antagonist. But there is always the possibility, that the Three-Eyed Raven, would have caused the downfall of the Targaryen from the beginning. That's why he sent Jon back to the Wall, and maybe he was the hidden cause of the Dance of the Dragons. But tell me what you think of this theory. Will we see the Three-Eyed Raven interfering in the events of the House of the Dragon? In the world of Westeros, the Three-Eyed Raven is known as a mysterious and powerful figure. Revered for his ability to see the past and the present. But, in the Game of Thrones series, he also plays a crucial role in manipulating the actions of key players, including Daenerys Targaryen. Through a series of visions, the Three-Eyed Raven may have convinced Daenerys that destroying the Red Keep was the only way to bring peace and justice to the Seven Kingdoms. But was this manipulation ultimately for the greater good, or did he have ulterior motives? How do we know that the Raven manipulated Daenerys? Could it be a secret plan of the Children of the Forest? To understand how the Three-Eyed Raven manipulated Daenerys, we must go back to the very beginning before Bran became the Three-Eyed Raven. As we know, Jaime Lannister threw Bran out of a window after Bran discovered his secret. Bran then begins his transformation. He is gradually recruited by an entity that influences his dreams. The Three-Eyed Raven visited Bran in his dreams, showing him visions of what would happen in the future, and what he should do. The first warning about the evil purposes of this entity comes from Bran's own nanny. She tells him not to listen to the ravens because they tell lies. Don't listen to it. Crows are all liars. The old woman is full of stories and legends of Westeros. Possibly, in these legends, she talks about the lies that ravens bring, or of the lying raven, referring to the three-eyed raven. Possibly, a foreshadowing of what would happen in the future. The three-eyed raven appeared during Bran's visions, although Bran did not understand why. The raven was recruiting the young Stark to become his replacement, transforming his mind little by little, and leading him toward their inevitable meeting. In one of Bran's visions, we can see the shadow of Daenerys' dragon in King's Landing. This shows that the Three-Eyed Raven was showing Bran the future, or that Bran was developing this ability. What is interesting about these visions, is that although Bran saw the dragon at King's Landing, he did not try to stop Daenerys. He didn't tell her that he had visions of her destroying King's Landing, he just allowed it all to happen. Could it be that the Raven allowed Daenerys to destroy King's Landing so that he could become king? In our previous video, we explained that the origin of Bran's powers comes from the Children of the Forest. These experimented on men to create the Night King, the White Walkers, and possibly the Three-Eyed Raven. But, if the Children of the Forest are responsible for all the magic in Westeros, then what is the Three-Eyed Raven's plan with Daenerys? The Children of the Forest understood that they cannot defeat humans in battle. In fact, there are very few of them left in the forests. It seems that the Children of the Forest's plan this time is not to engage in battle with the humans or to unleash a great disaster on Westeros. Their new plan may simply be to gain control of Westeros from within. Place the Three-Eyed Raven to lead the men to start gaining ground again. During Game of Thrones we realized, that behind the battles and the politics, there is a conflict that we don't fully understand. We know that there are manifestations of powers of the Lord of Light, and of the White Walkers, but we did not understand what their plan is. 
If this theory is true, then indeed the Night King, the White Walkers, the Three-Eyed Raven, Daenerys Visions, and even the Dragons, could be elements that are being used by the Children of the Forest to manipulate the men. Bran became the Three-Eyed Raven but completely lost his personality. It is as if an entity has replaced the young Stark, who came all the way to King's Landing to become king. He sent John to the north even though he knew John did everything to save the kingdom, and worst of all, he may have manipulated Daenerys. Bran revealed Jon Snow's identity to Sam because he knew that Sam would tell John and that this would cause a conflict between Daenerys and John. There is no reason why Bran would have revealed this great secret at that time other than to get Daenerys out of control. Daenerys attacked the Red Keep because she felt that the people did not love her and she should instill fear. This was because of Jon Snow himself, as several people knew his true parentage. If Jon Snow's true origin had not been revealed, Daenerys would not have gone mad, and Jon would not have had to stop her. We understand that this was an orchestrated plan so that the Three-Eyed Raven would end up as king. However, the manipulations of the Three-Eyed Raven might not be limited to what he told Sam. As I mentioned at the beginning, the Raven would appear in Bran's dreams to show him the past and the future. We know that this entity has the ability to create visions in people. Perhaps, this entity was the one who created the vision that Daenerys has at the end of the second season, where Daenerys sees the Red Keep destroyed. Possibly, from this vision, she understood that the Red Keep must be destroyed in order for her to become queen. The Red Keep represents the castle of the Lannister dictatorship, the place where Daenerys lost her family. And if it had to be destroyed for a new world to be reborn, Daenerys had to do it. If this is the case, and all of Daenerys' visions and actions were because of the Three-Eyed Raven, in an attempt by the Children of the Forest to acquire power again, this would put Jon Snow in a very bad position. Jon is on his way north, and perhaps he discovers the secret. That the Children of the Forest manipulated everything so the Raven would sit on the throne. That Daenerys' death was nothing but the result of the manipulations, and the person who is supposed to be on the throne is him. Perhaps, this is what the new Jon Snow series will be about. How Jon discovers the plot of the Children of the Forest and tries to dethrone the Three-Eyed Raven. Who is responsible for everything that has happened? Could it be then that the Children of the Forest wish to retake control of Westeros, and this is their real plan? Or is this just a crazy theory? One of the most underrated characters in the Game of Thrones universe is Samuel Tarly. He goes from being a despised young man to becoming one of the most important characters. However, behind his overcoming story, there could be an influence from an entity with a dark agenda. What would you think if I told you that the Three-Eyed Raven influenced Sam Tarly's life so that he later helped him to become king? I became the Three-Eyed Raven. Oh! I can see things happening now. All over the world. To understand how the Three-Eyed Raven influenced Samwell's life, we must start at the beginning. Samwell Tarly is the eldest son of House Tarly and heir to one of the most powerful kingdoms. However, from an early age, he was a disappointment to his father. Samwell hated hunting, sword training, or sports. Sam preferred books, studying events of the past, and immersing his mind in wisdom. His father was embarrassed, so one night he decides to threaten him. Either he joins the Night's Watch, or he takes his life right then and there. Sam's brother is the one who became the heir the Tarly family deserved, and Sam became just another man on the wall. Here on the wall, Sam meets Jon Snow and develops a good relationship with the Night's Watch, who become his new family. Sam fights in battles, finds love, and even becomes a maester. 
Benny returns to Winterfell and witnesses the most important moment in Game of Thrones when he reveals to Jon who his real father is. Bran and I worked it out. Your mother was Lyanna Stark, and your father was Rhaegar Targaryen. You've never been a bastard. You are Aegon Targaryen, true heir to the Iron Throne. I'm sorry, I know it's a lot to take. My father was the most honorable man I ever met. You see, and he lied to me all my life. Your father, Ned Stark, he promised your mother he'd always protect you. And he did. Robert would have murdered you if he knew. You're the true king. Aegon Targaryen, sixth of his name, protector of the realm, all of it. After Daenerys' death, Sam becomes the new Grand Maester of the realm. A story about the overcoming of a character that everyone thought would lose his life at any moment. It seems that the rule of the ablest survives in Game of Thrones did not apply to Samwell. And maybe this is not a coincidence. What if his luck is due to the fact that there was an entity that protected him? One of Sam's most memorable scenes is when he confronts a white walker and finishes it off. Stay back! You stay back! It is at this moment that Samwell shows us the weakness of these creatures. We might have thought that Sam managed to finish off this White Walker purely by chance. However, as we watch this scene again, we realize that there is an influence of something else. While Gilly and Sam are talking, they begin to hear the sound of crows. Go out there. Just want to look. The sound gets louder and louder, which alerts Sam that something is going on outside. Sam picks up the sword and sees dozens of crows in a tree watching him. Sam understands that something bad is happening, and asks Gilly to return to the house. The crows go silent, and a white walker arrives. Gilly mentions that the white walker is coming for the baby. We then see the fight between Sam and the white walker, then Sam fleeing with Gilly as dozens of crows chase them. When we first saw this scene, we thought the presence of the crows was due to something evil, the fact that the white walkers were coming. But when we look back on it, we realize that actually, the ravens were on Samwell's side. If the crows hadn't screamed, Samwell wouldn't have left the house, and he wouldn't have had a chance to stop the White Walker. In the scene where we see the crows chasing Sam, we might actually think that the crows are accompanying him, and it's not that they want to do something bad to him. But why did the crows warn Sam and then chase him? The answer to this question was right in front of our own eyes. During several scenes in Game of Thrones, the raven would appear a Bran, first at the window of his house, then in his dreams. Don't listen to it. Crows are all liars. <laughs> this means that the raven who alerted Sam was not a conventional raven. It was possibly the three-eyed raven, who is the enemy of the White Walkers. But why would the Three-Eyed Raven want to help Samwell? This is where this theory gets interesting. If indeed the Three-Eyed Raven, who is currently the King of the Seven Kingdoms, is a type of entity that is being transferred from body to body, this means that Bran is just fulfilling the purpose of the previous Three-Eyed Raven. And here could be the secret of why the Raven helped Samwell. The Three-Eyed Raven knew that Samwell would eventually become Maester, that he would end up at Winterfell, and that he would be the one to bring the news to Jon Snow. 
Samwell became the person who caused the trouble between John and Daenerys. If it had not been for Samwell, John would not have ended the life of the Mother of Dragons, because no one would have known that John was Aegon. Without Samwell then there would be no Bran as king either. He needs to know the truth. The truth about what? About himself. No one knows. No one but me. John isn't really my father's son. He's the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and my aunt Lyanna Stark. His last name isn't really Snow, it's Sand. He's not. Dornish bastards are named Sand. I transcribed the High Septon's diary. He annulled Rhaegar's marriage to Elia. He wed Rhaegar and Lyanna in a secret ceremony. Are you certain? I don't know why he'd lie. If this character had lost his life facing a White Walker, the Three-Eyed Raven would not be king, and coincidentally he was saved by a raven in his most difficult moment. After Sam confronts the White Walker, he meets Bran Stark before becoming the Three-Eyed Raven. It's too much of a coincidence that after Sam is saved by ravens, he meets the next Three-Eyed Raven inviting him to go north. You're John's brother. The one who fell from the window. I'd be dead if it wasn't for John. If you're his brother, you're my brother too, and anything I can do to help you, I will. Take us north of the wall. What? Why in the world would I you want to go? I don't want to. I have to. This leads me to think that maybe the three-eyed raven has been controlling everything to get power. This means that if this theory is true, it would be the reason why Sam survived so many things during the series and did not lose his life. Because there were more powerful forces protecting him since Samwell had to fulfill a purpose. Sam at present is the Grand Maester of the Realm and is investigating the whereabouts of Drogon. If his story continues in the Jon Snow series, we could see how Samwell discovers that the Three-Eyed Raven saved his life and how it had all been part of his plan to win the throne. Perhaps, Sam feels sad for his friend Jon, because he knows that Jon is supposed to be the king, and this could lead to a reunion. What would be the conflict then that could happen in the Game of Thrones sequel? Could it be that Bran Stark is no longer Bran Stark, and this entity known as the Three-Eyed Raven has controlled more things than we thought? It was a big surprise for fans after realizing that in the Game of Thrones universe, besides White Walkers and Dragons, there is also time travel. Bran Stark became the most powerful Green Seer and Skin Changer in the history of Westeros, being able to not only see the future and controlling other people's minds, but also capable of modifying the past. But what would you think if I told you that Bran Stark's influence may be much greater than we think? And that this young man could really be the one behind the creation of the Great Wall of Ice? To understand this theory, we must first understand Bran Stark's supernatural powers. His first gift was the prophetic dreams. Bran often experienced vivid dreams where he saw himself inside the body of his dire wolf. These were the first visions he had as a child after falling out of the window. He also began to have visions of the future, although he could not fully understand what he saw.
The second supernatural ability Bran demonstrates is being a skin changer. Bran has the ability to enter the minds of animals, which is known as warging. This is a fairly rare ability in the North, but to further complicate this ability, Bran can not only enter the minds of animals, but he can also control the minds of other people. As far as we know, Bran is the only one who can use this ability in this way, and although he only did it with Hodor, we can assume that in the future, Bran could use these abilities again with another human if necessary. Next, Bran develops the ability to be a green seer, which allows him to see events in the past, present, and sometimes, the future. At first, Bran did not understand what the visions were, only that a raven appeared to him. Initially it was the three-eyed raven who projected visions into the young Stark's mind, but then Bran became even more powerful than his predecessor. Not only did he travel to the past, but he also managed to affect Hodor's mind in order to save himself in the future. This means that Bran has two supernatural abilities that no one else in the Game of Thrones universe has had. Being a skin changer, able to control the minds of others, and being able to time travel. Now this is where this amazing theory comes in. It is believed that Bran Stark may have traveled back in time, to influence different important events in the history of Westeros, starting with the creation of the Great Ice Wall. The Ice Wall was built more than 8,000 years before the birth of Bran Stark, to protect the Seven Kingdoms from the White Walkers and other dangers from the North. This theory suggests that Bran may have time-traveled, and not only communicated with Bran the Builder, but it is possible that he entered his mind, and led him to build the Ice Wall, using both the Skin Changer and time-traveling abilities. Some even hold the opinion, that the reason Old Nan claims her mind is confused with all the previous brands, is because possibly they all acted the same way, as they were influenced in some way by the Three-Eyed Raven. I think the theory that Bran Stark has controlled Bran the Builder's mind is too far removed from the realism in the series. However, there is still a way Bran could have affected the past without having to take control of his ancestors' minds. As we study the implications of Bran's powers and depth, some have come to suggest that Bran might actually be the Lord of Light. The Lord of Light is a deity worshipped primarily in Essos, and his followers believe that this god sends messages to its priests through the flames, who interpret these visions. However, other non-believers of this religion have also seen visions, and heard voices in the flames. If time travel exists in this universe, just as Bran's father heard his voice in the distance, so Bran could be sending messages to the believers of Rualler through the flames to affect the future of Westeros. This idea is based on the premise that Bran is increasing his powers, not only can he control Hodor's mind or travel through time, but he could actively seek out the most important moments of Westeros, and modify them at his convenience. Take Melisandre as an example. This is one of the best-known Red Priestesses in Westeros. She received visions of the flames that led her to believe that Stannis was the prince that was promised, although what Melisandre saw in the visions was not entirely clear. Because of the fact that she supported Stannis, it eventually led her to meet Jon Snow and helped him to resurrect. Although Melisandre's visions were wrong, the outcome was as expected, and this proved most beneficial to Bran Stark. If Melisandre had not resurrected Jon Snow, the war in Winterfell would have happened differently. Also Jon would not have taken Daenerys' life, and Bran would not have been able to become king. Bran could have sent messages in the flames to Aerys Targaryen, as it is mentioned that as a young man he was incredibly intelligent, 
but something happened that transformed his behavior and drove him to madness. This madness could have occurred because of visions of the future projected by the three-eyed raven. Like all theories in this universe, there are many people who consider them absurd and claim that Bran's powers are more limited than we think. However, we have seen progress in his abilities, and the theory that Bran is manipulating the past, present, and future is something that does not escape the framework of possibilities of the series. But tell me what do you think about this theory? Did Bran Stark really enter Bran the Builder's mind to create the ice walls, or do you think it's an absurd theory? And if you liked this content, I invite you to become a member of this channel. Each contributor will see their name at the end of all videos. And for more videos with theories, news, and stories from the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You are on. The Three-Eyed Raven